Hi there everyone, how's it going? Um, it's Clara and I'm back with another um, science video. So in this one, uh, last time I talked about making thin films, I talked about making thin films uh, by different techniques. And so this time I'm gonna use a, uh, I'm gonna talk about a technique that we use called evaporation. So um, yes, let's get to it. So uh, I said I was talking about evaporation. So this is a type of um, manufacturing of thin film, uh, thin films. Um, and when we're making thin films, we tend to call them deposition. So this is evaporation. Uh, deposition is, is one way of describing it. Um, and uh, hopefully you'll understand why we're calling it deposition. Uh, I will say, and I think I mentioned this in the last video, but this is a type of physical vapor deposition technique, a PVD technique. And that's actually what I'm going to concentrate on my first few videos that are about um, deposition, thin film deposition techniques. So um, hopefully things will move on. So what do we do with thin film deposition? Well, the first thing we do, and you'll see that there's some similarities in the next few videos. In fact, even when I'm talking about uh, chemical vapor depositions, you'll see that there's sort of building blocks that we use for all different things. So in this case, we have the chamber. The chamber is the uh, reaction chamber where everything happens. So everything, uh, the, the thin film deposition happens on the inside of this chamber. And there's, um, well, there's different reasons for that. Uh, but the first is it, it means that all the everything's happening inside uh, is a very good reason. So we have this big metal um, container, basically, and it can be different sizes and they can be different shapes. Um, it depends on the technique, really, and it also depends on what you've got available. Inside the chamber, we put our substrate. So our substrate is the thing that we want to grow our thin films on. So... I mentioned in the last video about how, for example, I um, worked for a company that made uh, that put metal on the inside of crisp packets. So in that case, the substrate was um, a thin, flexible plastic. Uh, I also talked about putting thin films onto glasses, onto glass lenses, and so. Um, there the substrate would be the glass that we use and chances are you'll probably actually put the the lenses that you're going to use and put the thin films on top of them so that's our substrate and that goes inside our chamber now the geometry can change depending on the system however with evaporation i think you you tend to deposit it up so it'll be at the top of the chamber and then at the bottom of the chamber or somewhere down below and it will be directly below the substrate unless the substrate moves inside the chamber will have some sort of crucible so this is what we load with our material so this is our uh, this is very much what we load with our base material that we want to use so if we were making uh, something that was based on say titanium then we'd have maybe titanium powder in there um, and then that's and as I said in my first video, you know, you can have titanium in the bottom, uh, but as we deposit it, uh, we can change the structure, we can open the uh, alter the structure, and so that's why we start with the building blocks. And it could be that we start with titanium and we want to finish with titanium, it's just that the structure might be a little bit different. Um, and so we have this crucible probably made of a ceramic just because they're heat resistant to a large temperature and then we put our base material in there so it could be flakes it could be granules it could be a powder um it really depends on the metal that we're using and what's important is that we have to be able to heat this material to a certain point so that we can start to evaporate it so what we do is we suck the air out of the system so with um, this technique and a few of the others that I'll talk about, these are vacuum techniques. So we actually go down to a very low atmosphere, uh, a low pressure. And so this means that basically we suck all the air out. And when we have uh, materials, uh, uh, when we have atoms uh, traveling around, 
there's less collisions because there's nothing else in there. Also, if we had certain materials, we'd make um, we'd have reactions that we don't want. So we try and remove as much of the base pressure as we can, uh, and we can have ultra high vacuum. We can have high vacuum. I tend to work in the high vacuum field. Um, but it really does depend on the end product and what it is we're trying to find out. So we pull the air out of there uh, using these big old vacuum pumps, which are noisy as all to get out. And then we heat this crucible. So hopefully what we do is we heat it to the point where the material actually starts to evaporate because that's what we want. So we've got our material in there, let's say aluminium, and we want to evaporate that, yeah? So we heat this crucible up real high and then the material starts to evaporate and it travels through the vacuum. And it travels through the vacuum to the substrate. And there it will collate on the substrate. And because the substrate is not necessarily heated or not heated to the same temperature as the crucible, um, it, will, it will form a film. It will cool down, it will condense, and we'll start to get a film. Now, these atoms can move around and we can add temperature on there and stuff like that. But the basics is that we want the metal to evaporate at the bottom, travel up, land on the substrate, condense, and then we've grown this film. So we talk about growing a thin film and that's how we do it. And it's so that it's quite a simple process. Um, and, and yeah, it is, it is, it, it, it can be. So um, what else do we do? see if I've got my mouse back there we go so what we can also do is another technique is rather than having that crucible we can have a, a resistive what we call a boat so this is a block of uh, material uh, it can be a block of ceramic basically and we apply a massive heat and above it we've got this wire so a wire is cool because what we can do is we can continually feed the vacuum the the wire uh, in the crucible, we've got a certain amount of material inside there, it evaporates, and we've used it up. But if we've got wire feeders, then we can continually feed some wire. So what we do is we heat up this um, this metal crucible uh, using resistive heating, and it gets hot, and the aluminium starts to melt. So it will drip onto the crucible, and then it will uh, spread out across the thing, and then it will evaporate and the wire feeder will continue to feed new aluminium on so that we've constantly got a drop of the, say the aluminium, uh, that's the uh, metal that I'm using in this example, a drip of aluminium landing on the target, spreading out, heating up, and then as we saw earlier, it evaporates. And so we grow this thin film in that way. And so when I was talking about crisp packets, this is exactly what we're doing. Uh, now, the machines I used were a very different shape to this and much, much larger than uh, the ones that we use in the lab, but it's a technique that we can use, which is really cool. Now, what else can we do with this? Um, well, say we want to make a pattern, say we want to make uh, you know, some sort of basic circuit or something like that, what we can do is we can actually add a substrate mask. So we've got our substrate and then we put a mask in front of it, so some areas um, will block basically the line of sight from the resistive boat uh, and to the substrate. And so what happens is that as we start to evaporate, some of this material will actually land on the mask rather than landing on the substrate. And so what that means is that we're not coating all of the substrate. Some of it is staying on the mask. And then once we've finished, once we've done you know, the deposition for however long we want to do it, what we can do is we can cool the boat down, remove the mask, and then our substrate will be left with this pattern. And we can do this multiple times. So this is one of the things that we can do. And we can do this with different techniques. We can do this with different uh, chemical vapor deposition techniques, and we can do it with different physical vapor deposition techniques. It isn't just evaporation um, that we can use this for, we can use it for different techniques. And so that's, again, what we'll find, that we can use these techniques for multiple things that, you know, we can do all these different tweaks. So this is great. This is um, this is basically, yeah, in my opinion, this is pretty cool. So there we have it. That's what we do. Basically, we uh, we put some material into a vacuum chamber. We heat it up 
uh, to a large temperature and we evaporate it and it travels through the vacuum because it's vacuum there's nothing to bounce around it should travel from a to b without really hitting much else in the system there's there's not air in there to you know knock it around it'll land on the substrate condense and then we've uh, grown our film on the substrate uh, so like I say in the case of uh, crisp packets that will be with heated aluminium and we've put that onto a thin plastic web and that's it that's uh, that's the very basics of evaporation deposition and also I showed you about how to you know how we can use masks to make patterns and we can do that on a very small scale so uh, with that that's evaporation and thanks for watching and I'll see you on uh, the next video where I'll talk about pulse laser deposition. Thanks for watching.